Let's open the scriptures. Let's read Exodus. Are you booking your exod? Three. Chapter three. Oh, we have a few minutes. I won't preach long. Excuse me. Yes, sir. Three. Now we tell it. One to twelve. Ah. Yes. This is your night. You will show my name. A night to remember. About all you put or pull. This night is determining you. What will happen? Amen. What will happen next year? If you are hearing me say amen. Okay, let's read Genesis 3, Exodus 3. 1. Exodus. Exodus 3, verse 1. Yes, read now, verse 1. Now Moses was keeping the flock of Jethro, Reuel, his father in law the priest of Midian, and he led his flock to the west side of the wilderness and came to Horeb, meaning Sinai, the mountain of God. The angel of the Lord appeared to him in a blazing flame of fire from the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush was on fire. Yet it was not consumed. So Moses said, I must turn away from the flock and see this great sight, why the bush is not bent up. When the Lord saw that he turned away from the flock to look, God called to him from the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, here I am. Then God said, do not come near. Take your sandals off your feet out of respect because the place on which you are standing is a holy ground. Then he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham. The God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. Then Moses hid his face because he was afraid to look at God. The Lord said, I have in fact seen the affliction, meaning suffering, desolation, of my people who are in Egypt and have heard their cry because of their taskmasters meaning their oppressors. For I know their pain and suffering. So I have come down to rescue them from the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up from that land to a land that, meaning that is good and spacious to a land flowing with milk and honey a land of plenty, to the place of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, and the Perizzites, the Hevites, and the Jebusites. Now behold, the cry of the children of Israel has come to me, and I have also seen how the Egyptians oppresses them. Therefore, Come now and I will send you to Pharaoh and then bring my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. Then Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and that I should bring the children of Israel out of Egypt? And God said, Certainly I will be with you and this shall be the sign to you that it is I who have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall serve and worship God at this mountain. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for this word in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I want us to learn something this night. 
Bona le nto e ke ratang re ithuta yona go shongo bjo. I'm praying that you understand this message. Ke rapela hore le thalonganya le ku shemola itse o cross. You have been reading this. Ka hore khale le ntse le ba la tsabai. God was looking at the Israelites. Mo di mona le be le tshe ba Israel. They were having task masters. Ne gona le batho ba ba shumishao. They were having oppressors. Ne gona le batho ba ba hatelelao. When he looked, he realized that no one can save them. Ha le belela tholora ha yo motho ya ka ba plusao. He need someone who's coming from them. O tokea o mongwe ya thayang go bona so that he will come with a message. And the message was, you go out from the Egypt. And when you are free, you will worship in that mountain. I was learning that God, he, he don't just allow us to worship. The first thing that God does, He gives us mercy. That's right, mercy. God gives us mercy. Because we cannot fight by ourselves. He declared mercy to them. When He declared mercy, He said, I have How my people are suffering. Now, it's me, God. I'm seeing my people. They are being afflicted. When you look at that, He had compassion. And say, my people cannot go through. Through this. The mercy was declared for his people. There is something that Mama read there which, which was very, very important. Which I want to read here. When Moses who didn't even know God? Who knew God by tradition? He has not even met God. Moses was given also mercy. The Bible says when he turned to face Bible, the one who was speaking, he was told that remove your sandals. You are still wearing the sandals that you wear when you kill the Egyptians. I have given you mercy without looking at what you have done. I have come to use you though you are not fit to be used. Tonight, God wants to use someone here who's not fit to be used. I'm here to give you mercy and use you to go back there where you come from and explain to my people that after all has been done, you will worship God on that mountain. There will be a mountain that will be established by God. Right now, we don't know the mountain. Because God wants to use someone here. After the message was declared, and Moses now was facing down. Hearing God, hearing that he must take off his sandals. The Bible says something. I want to read there. He says, Moses hid his face because he was afraid to look at God. But he says, the Lord says, seeing the affliction, suffering, desolation of my people who are in Egypt. And I've heard their cry because of the taskmasters. Moses was given mercy. Now he's told another mercy. 
Listen to this. You cannot be sent to declare mercy when you are not given mercy. Moses was given mercy. Now the assignment of mercy came. Moses, go there. I have seen the suffering of my people. I have seen the situation of what happened. I'm sending you there. I want to hear something here. You know, after God spoke, he said something. He said, it's not an issue that I have seen only. I want to declare to you that there's a place there's a land that I have been occupied. But there are some people I want to remove them. And I want to put you and there. In other words, after mercy was declared, the promise came. God, he doesn't just give you mercy. He also give you the promise. And say, you see what? There are people who already taken something. But there's a promise because of mercy. You people will go and take over. There are things you need to take over. When God wants to give you mercy, there's a promise that has been established. There's a land, there's a house, there's a, there's a job, there's a promotion that you need to take Listen to this. I have learned that after that, I heard that after you have taken them, there will be celebration. There will be festival. If you are hearing me say amen. amen. In other words, you don't celebrate until you find mercy. There's someone here who wants to be given mercy and celebration will be your portion. Listen to this. You are approaching a year where you will celebrate. Because someone is about to be removed and you are about to take over. If you are hearing me say, I hear you. I want to tell you something. In this land we are living in, there is nothing that is not owned by someone. God is still working the same way. You want to remove someone and give you something. You want to take a car of someone and give you. You want to give, take a house of someone and give you. Listen, you have, you have to find mercy so that you celebrate. I'm, I'm beginning to feel that there will be celebration in Charis. As a celebration is coming. There's victory that is coming. Success that is coming. I see someone here. You, you have been crying. 2022. 2022. But I'm here to tell you that it's over with crying. It's over from now. The mercy of God has come. I see you being taken out. I see you being removed from the shame you have experienced to the joy that is coming. If you are here, me shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I'm here to tell you because I feel the grace that is coming in 2023. When people are saying you will never come out from the oppression of the enemy. I'm here to tell you that you are about to come out and the victory will be there. Celebration will be there. I'm expecting charity. I'm expecting celebration. I'm expecting celebration. Listen to this. You need to understand this. You know, mercy when it's applied, it's applied 
for the people. There are some people who say, hey, I cannot do it again. Me, I have given up. Others, I just see the glimpse of the success that they are thinking, but they cannot enter it. But I'm here to tell you by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, Christ that you are bound to enter a place where everyone will be shocked and be surprised because of the grace that is coming your way. If you are hearing me, shout hallelujah. I'm just here not to preach. I'm going to show you something here. If you just read these scriptures, you'll be surprised. If you read chapter one, chapter one, Malachi chapter one, Malachi chapter one, chapter one, verse one to five, you are going to be encouraged. It says the oracle burdened some message of the word of the Lord yes. to Israel through my messenger Malachi. Mm -hmm. I have loved you, says the Lord. But you say, how and in what way have you loved us? Was not Esau, Jacob's brother, declared the Lord? Yet I loved Jacob, Israel, but in comparison with my love for Jacob, I have hated Esau, meaning Edom. Stop, stop, stop. Here, this is a message from a prophet who was well known in Israel, Malachi. He was declaring to the people of Israel. Now we just tell us Israel. And say, hey, God say he has loved me. But because of the situation that was happening, listen, but the time of Malachi, the people were worshipping God. They were becoming poor. They were becoming challenged. To extend that Malachi prophesied that you people you have neglected the house of God. That's why you are facing what you are facing. Now Malachi was coming with the message. Hey, God has loved you. They say, how come you say something like how that? How can you say we have been loved by God when we are facing these troubles? We are facing challenges. We are losing things. How can you say that? Now Malachi began to quote what God said. That God spoke that he hated Israel, but he loved Jacob. He had mercy on Jacob. Jacob was not a true Christian. We know that he deceived his father. We know he was not even fine. We know he deceived his father. But when God looked at him, he said, this one is the one I've chosen. When he searched for my things, he can do everything together. We need Christians to do everything to enter holy of holies. You can see what the Bible says. I have loved. Jacob, but I have Jacob hated. And no one can question me. But I'm here to tell you this. You have been loved by God. You have been loved by God. It's only mercy. God, when he looks at you, he says, I love this one. But I hated this brother. You are about to be chosen from your family. 
Listen, there's someone here. You are about to be chosen from your family. When you look at yourself, you are not better than your brothers. But by the mercy of God, God is taking you and bring you close. I have loved you and I have hated your brother. I have loved you and I have hated your sister. I have loved you and I have hated whoever you love. Sometimes ask yourself, how come that's how God works? That's how God works. That's how God works. Hey, I have been loved by God. God has given me mercy. The mercy of God made me to be chosen and be loved by God. There is someone who is here today. Your situation doesn't have the end point. Your roles are called the same. When you look, there is no breakthrough. But there's a message here. I have loved you. Despise your weakness. Despise your challenge. Despise your trouble. The mercy of God is about to locate you. People will be surprised. Why is not happening to me? This God, he has got his own way of Choosing. When he chooses people, he goes by himself. He sits down by his direction. When he does it, he uses his compassion. No one is perfect before God. You are hearing the sound of my voice. I'm here to tell you the mercy of God has come upon you. I have loved you. I have hated your brother. And I have chosen you. I have hated your cousin. And I have loved you. You are the one. You are the one. You are the one I need. You are the one I want to use. You are the one I want to raise. You are the one that I want to show my power through you. You know this God says something. He says that I can harden the heart of Pharaoh. I have chosen Pharaoh. So that I harden his heart for the mighty power to, to be visible. In other words, he chose Pharaoh and make him not to understand. There are some people around you here that don't understand what you are going through. But you understand because you are chosen. Hey, the mercy of God has come to you and brighten your understanding. You are now you understand how God works. If you are hearing me shout hallelujah. There are some people standing in the tree. They are about to question how come you tell them I have mercy of God. Tell them I have mercy of God. How come you how do you travel all over the world? Why do you have mercy of God? Why do you have mercy of God? How do you become successful? Why do you have mercy of God? How 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 do you have mercy of God? I just want to take you there. I was asking myself, why is the Bible says God chose the foolish ones? Why is that? 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 When I'm preaching here, sometimes I look at you. I'm surprised you're even lifting up your hands. What are you doing? I saw you say, but you lift your hands. I can't lift my 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 hands. 
cannot live like this. I cannot live by debt. I cannot live by begging. I know my father. I have received mercy. My God is on my side. I cannot live like this. I am not a prodigal son. I am coming back. I am coming to my father. I am coming to my comfort. I cannot live like this. I know I have come to my senses. 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 Hey, 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 Let me see you jumping. Let me see you jumping. Let me see Thank you, Jesus. Listen. This year. Wow. This is 2023. Bow Witcher 2023. Hey.